Hi, uh, my name is Lucas. I'm with the Carlo Precision, and in this video, I'll show you how to create a quick fly through through your project using the uh, installed uh, video app. So let's open my project. And let's view project in 3D. Here it is. I do have a project that I was working on on a different video. So I'm using the same project, but essentially it's part of a structure. Uh, creating a video is really easy, but there are a couple of steps that have to be uh, taken to make it look good. Uh, one thing you will notice that I have individual scan points, scan point clouds for every one of these. So before you create the video, make sure that you either create uh, the scan point clouds by going into operations and creating, and I already have them created, so that's why it's grayed out, but creating your scan point clouds instead of having to have each scan, you know, typically loaded where you have the little green arrow or the little green square showing you, that's uh, what you kind of want to avoid. So in order to still be able to visualize the scan, uh, creating a scan point cloud will allow you to uh, create a smoother video, a nicer video, and uh, uh, will essentially run a little faster too. So I am unloading and will these, these uh, scan point clouds are still visible. But you notice I have them uh, available pretty much in every cluster that you see me expand here. So these little icons that show you three in front of the cloud, that means I already have a scan point cloud created and I'm visualizing without having to load any of my scans into memory. All right, now that's, that's done. Uh, certain things that uh, might need to be addressed is depending on uh, how much detail you actually want in your scans recommend changing a couple of these settings over here uh, typically for smoother nicer video you can do super sampling higher or lower I'll just leave it on 2x2 two two over here but you can play with these settings this is not something that will break your video it's just may make it look a little nicer may make it look a little rougher so this is up to you also uh, typically I have the adaptive uh, point size turned on and in the layers if I want to in my video visualize the targets that I used so like over here I have the spheres if uh, this green uh, is not something desirable you can go ahead and actually uncheck the matched objects and if you hit apply you'll see that they're now at least not highlighted in green so that's one thing that you can turn on or turn off and also if you don't like these hovering scan objects or scanners in your view then go ahead and go into extra and there's a button that says scan positions if you uncheck that they disappear now it'll be a smoother transitioning video if you want to call it that all right uh, let's say we want the video to start somewhere up above to give you a overview of your actual project all you have to do once you're done with these um, settings, you can close them, of course. But all you have to do right now is there is a little icon that looks uh, like a magnet, or what is it, like a camera with a little disk icon. This allows you to save your vantage points. So essentially what you're doing is you're committing to certain angles uh, from where you want uh, the video to be taken. So. I will save this one. If you feel like it, you can go ahead and actually rename the viewpoints, but because I'm going to do a linear fly-through, I really don't feel like renaming everything. Notice also that once I hit the OK button, there will be a new 
viewpoints folder that will keep all these perspectives that I save in its tree. So we'll carry on, we'll go to the next location, we'll say save over here, next one we'll go through the door here, hit OK, kind of try to fly in here. I can stop at any point, but we'll do something like this. Go through the wall a little bit, but again, it doesn't really matter. All right, now we have a couple of viewpoints. If you want to actually see any one of them, you can just go ahead and activate it, and the program will take you into that position. But this is your starting point for creating the video. Uh, this is where you'll have to have this uh, video app over here. You can click from new path because this will be a brand new camera uh, path for the video. Um, on the left of this pane you will see the sequence of uh, steps or the sequence of viewpoints that it tries to put into the video. Um, and because I went in a linear fashion I don't have to adjust them too much so I'll just shift left click all of them and hit add to the actual camera path. So now I'm here. Now if you notice, we'll take this off a little bit. We have now a, like a little trajectory shown inside scene, which shows you, okay, this is what the camera will look like when it runs through. And because videos are really effective and really nice, but you kind of want to know what you're actually creating before you commit to it, I like to do a little preview. So I'll hit the preview path and hit the play button. And this will show you with very low detail, but still an idea of, oh yeah, this is what our video will look like if we commit to uh, the, tra the, the trajectory. You can speed it up a little bit. I can go to the next position. Let's just go to the next one again. All right, so. You can investigate if you don't like how high, how low the actual trajectory is. You can adjust the actual positions of these cameras. Unfortunately there's no way to just drag and drop them, move them, but you can do something like this, like you saw that there was a camera path that went through the, those boxes over here, I didn't want that. So I will take my camera to a little bit of a higher position, maybe, maybe over here. I will hit the button, hit save. I'll have another viewpoint in here. I will not save my actual path. But now if I go create the camera path again, I will add all of my points and I know camera 13, which was the last one that I actually did, I need to get up a little closer to what it should be in sequence. So I believe that's probably right. Yes, so camera path four should be something that I remove and you notice that it's now going a little smoother from three to four, which is now renamed 13. So let's just do a quick preview again. I'll go to, let's see if it's a little nicer and I don't have to actually go through boxes.
Yeah, it's a little better. Okay. Well, you get the point. You can adjust them just by rearranging the actual uh, camera positions over here. Once you're finished, hit next. It'll ask you, do you want to save your camera path? Say sure. Again, if you want to give it a name, you can give it a name, but I'll just leave it by default. You also notice that there is now a camera path saved here. I can't really open it because this window is preventing me, but you can see that the camera path um, folder is here now too. Now, notice there's a couple of things that you can adjust. Uh, image folder, mm, this is what the video will be made of, so this, this is where the mm, images will go to. Just take a note of it. If you want to change it, you can obviously always browse to a different location. But uh, I'll leave this be. Image base name, if you want to give it a different name, we'll say, I don't know, video. And we'll do video photos. And then also what I recommend is doing MP4 because MP4 is more Cross, uh, cross platform compatible with uh, different video types or different computers. Also, video uh, folder where the actual finished video will be. Make note of that. We can call this, well, it is video already. We'll say fly through. And now you commit to how high a resolution you actually want to do. Typically, I do HDMI just so that it's nice on a TV. If I'm really trying to impress somebody or I'm trying to be really smooth, you can do 60 frames per second, but 30 should be enough. Bitrate how nice and smooth the actual uh, scene will, scenery will be. High is what I usually typically do. If I want to make the video, I don't know, 1 minute and 30 seconds, change that and you'll notice that frame rate changes. So uh, based on the settings over here, this is what will change. Excel, uh, camera acceleration I usually don't mess with much, but um, it is something that um, you can play with also. Uh, once you're happy, what I like to do is save these settings so that I don't have to readjust them again. And uh, just give it a name, uh, video fly through settings and then just hit save. Uh, also consequently you can actually create only images. Uh, the video will not be created and only the uh, file, uh, only the folder with the images will be created and then you can create the video with those images yourself if you have an application for that. Vice versa, if you select video, uh, no images will be created. They will be uh, used just as temporary pictures, which then will be linked into a video. But uh, typically create both, so video and images. And now you can hit the start button. It'll always warn you uh, about disconnecting or closing anything else that's running in the background and making the video smoother. We'll hit OK, and then depending on the resolution, depending on all the settings that you have selected, it will take long, longer, shorter, which will give you a little bit of re time remaining. But I've had videos which were so high resolution, so large, that uh, they took over a day to process. So this process can take a little while. Uh, that's it.